Good morning. Um, my name is Trudy Hall, and I'm the 16th head of school here. And I want to thank you very much for coming to spend the day with us. Um, it would probably be a wise assumption on your part to assume that I'm going to tell you exactly why you should come to Emma Lloyd School. Good assumption, but wrong. Um, what I'm actually going to do today, what the staff has asked me to do, is to model um, being out of your comfort zone. The model being out of your comfort zone. Because it's actually something that we do with some regularity, as I fall off the steps, we do with some regularity here at Emma Lloyd. In fact, we actually expect it of all the students and all the adults on this campus. So why should you go out of your comfort zone? You should go out of your comfort zone because it stretches your brain. And your brain, once stretched, can never go back to the way it looked again. The whole world looks different to you. And you see things and you do things and you feel things differently. So we're gonna try and do that today. And what I'm going to talk about is, hope, I hope something that you will talk about in the rearview mirror today. As you're driving away, I'm hoping to give you something to talk about because I don't think you're gonna agree with everything I say. When you get out of your comfort zone, you're in a bit of a provocative zone, and you have to put yourself out there. And you may say or do some things that other people don't necessarily appreciate or agree with, and that's part of going out of your comfort zone. It's part of the nervous making. Now, I do have to be totally transparent here, um, because this is not the first time I have given this talk. Yes, I gave it on Thursday. However, I was as terrified then as I am now because if I were in my comfort zone, I would be at that podium with a full script, every word written down, both of my hands on it, probably with finger in place so I didn't lose my remarks as I looked up to try and make that perfunctory eye contact that one is supposed to make during a speech. Um, the fact that I'm up here with a few slides, kind of freewheeling it, is what makes me terrified. I can feel the tingles on the back of my legs as I stand here. Public speaking um, is not necessarily a forte of mine. So I want you to, uh, and I trust, you may trust that I won't embarrass you, I want you to raise your hand if you are 15 years or younger. 15 years or younger. That's a goodly number of hands. You have been on this earth as long as I have been at this school. When you were born, I was here. When you turned 10, I was here. I'm still here. That makes me old. <laughs> That's not my age. It was a long time ago. Those are the number of years that I've actually spent working with girls. So that makes me wise. And what I would tell you then is that makes me a wise old woman. And what I've learned, and in fact what the wise old woman in the room know, is that we have wisdom to share. And it comes in the form of gifts. So here's my first gift to you. When you're going to go out of your comfort zone, when you're even thinking about it, this is the question you ask yourself. It's the question I asked myself when the director of admissions said, would you try and do this? Would you try and do a TED Talk, something you haven't done before? I thought, what's the worst that can happen? If I fail, my husband will still love me. If I fail, I will still have my job because my boss is not in this room. <laughs> and and if, I, if I seem weird to you and if it was zippy to you, the fact is that I'm a head of school and head of schools are really used to being seemed weird about. You know, I mean, that's what people do. They, they actually assume that the head of school is some strange weird object. So, so the reality is that I think I can take this risk because I don't really see the downside. Many women in the room may recognize this font and these words. This is the title of the column that Oprah Winfrey writes in her magazine every month, what I know for sure. So 12 times a year, she knows something for sure. Now, she's been writing this column since I have been head of the school. So for the last 15 years, 12 times a year, she knows something for sure. That's a lot to know for sure, and I don't know that much for sure. And I bet that if she were actually here with us and we asked her to be honest, that those things she thought she knew for sure 15 years ago, she probably doesn't know for sure now. She's probably changed her mind because the world moves and our opinions and our feelings move. So when you're gonna go out into your comfort zone, um, you're probably 
I'm going to start with something that you may know a little bit about, but something that's actually going to educate you in that process. So I'm not going to talk to you about something I know for sure. I know a lot about girls. But I actually know a little bit more about risk taking. So what I want to talk to you about today is that notion of girls and risk taking, because it's something I've been thinking a lot about. I'm not entirely sure. I'm puzzling through some things. I'm going to ask you to puzzle through some things with me, and I would invite you throughout the day or after you get home to report back and share your thoughts and see where I may be off balance. What I do know for sure is that risk taking is a part of a successful, satisfying life. If you don't take risks, you don't learn. If you don't learn, you don't grow. If you don't grow, you won't have a satisfying, successful life. So I do know that what you need to do as you approach your high school years is to start really getting serious about risk taking. As I think about risk taking, I think it comes from that place of, I can do that. I can do that. But I don't really know where I can do that comes from. I can do that. I can do that. I can do that. Now, I want you to say that with me. I can do that. I can do that. I can do that. I can do that. Right? Now, doesn't it, from someplace deep inside, that kind of feels powerful, feels pretty good, feels pretty affirming. Where does that come from? Well, I think it probably comes from having some courage. And I define courage as sort of standing up in the face of it. So probably that sense of power comes from that. But it also comes from being brave. Now I see courage and bravery as two very different things. Courage is standing up in the face of fear and bravery is stepping out into it. So courage is kind of reactive and bravery is proactive. And you need to have both. You need to be both courageous and brave. Clearly, you need to have some imagination because you have to be able to imagine what it would look like if you succeeded and what it would look like if you failed. That goes back to the question I gave you. Competence is somewhere in there, and of course, so is confidence. But that takes us right back to the beginning, and since I'm not really sure where confidence comes from, I had to take a few steps back. So I started to think about risk taking as the intersection of intellectual curiosity and bravery. If you're not intellectually curious, why the heck would you want to be brave? And if you're really brave, but you're not intellectually curious, what would you be brave about? So you have to have both of those things intersected somehow and in some way. So that means that I wanted to take apart bravery a bit and talk a little bit about that. And I think that bravery must be some sense of a, a powerful, elixir, if you will, a combination of both confidence and competence. Two very different things, but they have to come blended together for you to be someone who would step out into life. I just finished this book and I liked it a lot. You might like it too. Um, it is about the imagined childhood of Sarah Grimke. Now Sarah Grimke was an abolitionist um, in the pre-Civil War South. Uh, so imagine, if you will, a young woman growing up in the South who was against slavery and what that might have been like for her and how much bravery she might have needed. And the author has our young Sarah Grimke saying, if you are going to err, if you're going to make a mistake, do so on the side of audacity. Do so boldly. If you're going to make a mistake, do so with conviction. You know, get out there and make that mistake and learn from it. She, she uses a visual, which I like, which is my other gift to you. She talks about throwing herself over the threshold of life. Throwing herself over the threshold of life. And that felt very proactive to me. And so when I think of bravery, I think about throwing yourself over the threshold of life. We know this girl. She's in each of us. She's in the adults in this room, too. This girl is our authentic self. And I want you to go back in time when you knew this girl really well, when you knew your authentic self. You were invincible. You were going to conquer the world. You had an idea. You had a plan. There was nothing that was going to stop you. So when I reel it all the way back, I think, OK, it must start here. It must start with the authentic self. And what if we could put the authentic self 
in a bit of a petri dish, if you will. What if we could imagine that the authentic self was a bit of a biological experiment and we would put it in an ele into elements and hopefully we would grow bravery? Because bravery is not genetic. Bravery is not a gift. Bravery doesn't fall from the sky. You have to grow bravery. It's more like a muscle. You have to grow it and you have to practice it. So I would think that if we were going to do that, what we'd have to do is put the authentic self in a social environment where it could have lots of meaningful relationships. Relationships that would sound, would surround it with friendship, with challenge, and of course, that would have to be an intellectually stimulating relationship because remember, we're trying to fuel intellectual curiosity as well because that's, that's where that intersection is going to come from. And then we have to have someone in that environment who actually pushes you out on that limb, who says you can do that before you say, I can do that. Someone who believes in you. It's probably an adult. Might be two adults, might be three adults, but it's someone who believes in you and they have to be in that Petri dish with you. And then finally, you have to have an opportunity to do something that you want to do and someone has to just let you go for it. Succeed or fail, they have to let you go for it. So those would be the things that I would put in that Petri dish. And I think that's where the beginning of bravery comes from. And, and why? Why would those things work? Well, I've been thinking about this, and I think it's because it makes you feel recognized and respected for the unique person that you are, because every single one of us is unique. And that makes us feel important, and that gives us a sense of belonging. And that's the virtuous circle. Rinse and repeat, rinse and repeat, mm -hmm. rinse and repeat. And that's what grows in that Petri dish. But there is one more thing, um, and that would be, for me, passion. Um, the sense of um, real energy that comes from having that idea. So this young woman is not Amelia Earhart, but she does represent someone who was probably doing something, given the date of the picture, that was highly unusual for women to do at the time. She's kind of leaning into life, and I imagine that that's what passion is. Passion is sort of leaning into life. And passion is that insurance policy, so that if your competence is a little off on a given day, or your confidence might be lacking on a given day, or you can't quite dig up the courage that you need, that passion is that insurance policy to get you through. And so that's probably in my Petri dish as well. I, I really don't much like talking about princesses. In fact, if you ask me that question later today, I'll tell you why. Um, I think we're raising far too many princesses in our world. Um, but this is a princess who, whose wisdom I can get behind. And this is Princess Merida. Um, she's from the movie Brave. Some of you may know her. Here's one of her quotes. There comes a day when I don't want to be a princess. No rules, no expectations. A day when anything can happen, a day where I can shape my fate. Now before you get nervous, adults in the room, we all know that for the rest of our life we will live in a place where there are rules and expectations. We know that. And so long as the rules and the expectations have something to do with our safety and our welfare, we can live within those. I will put that seatbelt on. But this is not what Merit is talking about. What Merit is actually talking about are those moments when somebody tries to smother your authentic self. Somebody comes up with a rule or an expectation and it's just not who you are and it forces you to be less than yourself. Here's a young woman who our um, Emma girls met a few weeks ago. Her name is Shabana. Um, she defines bravery. She lives in Kabul, Afghanistan, where as she says, it is an act of bravery just for a girl to go to school. As she talked to us about her own life journey, which meant that she, instead of going off to be a doctor, which she had the opportunity to do, changed her path and went back and actually began the um, School of Leadership in Kabul, Afghanistan. It is a boarding school for girls in Kabul, Afghanistan. And you could have heard a pin drop when she asked us at the end of her speech a moral question. For whom is your education? And her challenge to us was that um, it's wonderful to, be, wonderful to be intellectual curious, it's wonderful to get a great education, but who is that education for and what are you going to do with it to make the world a better place? It was a wonderful moment for our girls. So let me leave you with a last quote from Princess Mary. If you have the chance to change your fate, would you? 
I hope that you are growing in a petri dish that is filled with all kinds of things that produce confidence and courage, that make you feel competent. I hope that there are people around you who are supporting your ideas. I hope that you have passion in your life, but what I want for you, I want for you to be brave. Thank you.